Here we are again in this Adobe InDesign lesson and we'll continue to design our newsletter specifically we are working with objects. It's a continuation of lesson 4 and it's part 7 of this video lesson series. In this lesson we are working on a four page newsletter. We'll add text and images and make several modifications to the objects in this document. Our main goal is to change the shape of a frame, to wrap text around graphics, and work with compound shapes. Firstly, we're changing the shape of a frame. And let's discuss briefly about this topic. Resizing graphics frame with the selection tool maintains its rectangular shape. The direct selection tool and the pen tool would give more relevance when doing it. So let's see how this direct selection tool and pen tool has to offer us. So we'll choose page 3 from the page box at the bottom of our workspace. I have been circled in red. Then we'll go to the layers panel. In the layers panel we'll select the text layer and make sure that it is not locked. It's actually I have uh, marked X there, so that should not be locked. Next to this is to change the shape of the rectangular frame. Let's go and proceed. With the use of direct selection tool, now the direct selection tool is the second tool found in our tools panel. And the shortcut key is the A key, letter A. When we press letter A, direct selection tool will automatically be selected. I have been circled in red. And then we'll be able to select this frame encircled in blue. There are actually four. Notice that there's a white dot at the edge of the document. The white dots simply mean that the frame is selected and it is active. And oh, by the way, uh, you just have to click that once Okay, I did not click four times, I just click once and that frame will be selected. Next is we'll press the P key. When we press the P key, it's actually the pen tool I have encircled in red. And that's the shortcut key to activate the pen tool. In here, we need to carefully position the pointer over the top edge of the frame. Actually, it's the the top edge of the frame path where it connects with the vertical ruler in the first columns on page 3. When we see the add anchor point tool, it's actually the plus sign there, then we can click it. A new anchor point is added and the pen tool automatically changes to the add anchor point tool when it moves over an existing path. Move the pointer where the horizontal guide below the two column text frame connects with the bleed guide, as you can see as I have been circled there. Using the pen tool, click again to add another new anchor point, and then we can choose the edit menu and deselect all. Take note here this point we created in the previous step will form the corners of the irregular shape we are creating. Repositioning the anchor point at the upper right corner of the green frame will complete the reshaping of the frame. We'll switch to the direct selection tool. Click to select the upper right corner point of the green frame. Drag the point down. As you can see the arrow from there, the graphics frame is now properly shaped and sized for the design. So once we have that white background, we can choose the file menu and save what we have done so far. Next, we'll wrap a text around a graphic and we're wrapping the yield sign in our, in our document. So firstly, we'll select the selection tool. Then we'll drag the yield sign inside our document. So by the way, I got the yield sign from our uh, pasteboard. It's just the side of our you know, pasteboard and I have dragged it there. 
and after we have placed the image we'll go to the window window menu and select text wrap and here we'll be able to see the text wrap panel it's active now in the text wrap panel we'll select wrap around bounding box I have in circle there but in here we'll notice that there's a lot of white space so we can see there's a lot of white space uh, beside our image so we'll try a different option so sounds like wrap around bounding box is not quite applicable in this particular graphics in here we change uh, we'll change uh, we'll select the wrap around object shape then we'll change the offset box to 1p in the wrap options section we'll choose both right and left sides then in the contour options we'll choose detect edges and the result is quite satisfying now as you can see from the document or from the workspace so we can close the text wrap panel and save what we have done so far so go ahead click file and save moving on in this section we'll use various features that allow us to create non-rectangular frames so we are going to work with compound shapes in the next uh, step so we'll choose the rectangular tool as I have encircled in red and create a rectangle here the one with the blue circle so after we have selected the two objects we'll go to the object menu then down way down there we'll see we will be able to see the pathfinder and then choose the subtract uh, option and after we click the subtract button then we have removed the green background and our text has a white background now and that looks satisfying now so with the green box still selected we'll choose object menu and then lock this particular object and this will help avoid accidental repositioning of the frame that's why we need to lock it next we'll create polygons and convert shapes which will be continued in our next meeting so I hope that we have learned how to change the shape of a frame wrap text and work with compound shapes in this lesson thank you